Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Steve Harmon. Uh, I'm located at uh, 1109 East Pembroke Avenue in Hampton, Virginia at Oakland Cemetery. Uh, thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, first of all, what I'd like to do is thank God uh, for this project here. Uh, he, uh, we've had a lot of issues here over the years and uh, I know with what we're doing today without his divine intervention it wouldn't be possible and so uh, <clears throat> prayers would be very welcome here okay first uh, I'll tell you a little bit about myself uh, uh, my name's Steve Harmon again and uh, 68 years old retired federal employee spent 36 years working for Norfolk Naval Shipyard and I knew before I retired that I would you know, wanted to do this, okay? Uh, I didn't have uh, any idea to the extent of uh, <clears throat> what was needed here, but I learned pretty fast. So let me get on with uh, <clears throat> uh, the main purpose of this video, is to try to do an introduction uh, here. All right, this cemetery is approximately 161 years old. There's a lot of families in here that have no relatives nobody to take care of their graves there's a lot of babies buried in here without any relatives around and uh so but i'm a volunteer like others and what i'd like to do is to put a hands out and a thanks to uh let's say the moose lodge around the corner they come out here and uh they come out here during a holiday i think one of their big events is memorial day they come out here with a whole gang of people cut the grass and weed eat contribute to to the well keeping of the cemetery and we'd like to thank them a lot uh, there's another group called the sons of the confederates they they're regularly coming out assisting and providing tools and equipment uh enwell camp uh, magruder enwell camp 99 a big thanks to them and then there's citizens people that live within walking distance here that come around here and uh they also contribute to to maintenance of this and equipment so that's a big thanks. <clears throat> and then one of the issues that we have, uh, you, know, it, you know, it's one of the big issues I think a lot of people are concerned with, and you can see on the, on the news, uh, on YouTube and uh, uh, newspapers, is the maintenance and upkeep over the years. Yes, it's been a problem. Uh, it's, it's been taken care of. Uh, I know that the Air Force had came out and were contributing uh, for a long time here. We actually still have a lot of their equipment and, uh, here. And uh, one of their lawnmowers that we have has pulled me out of a hole many a times. Uh, right now, uh, you know, I hit a lot of things. The equipment holds up good, but, you know, it's human error. I'm hitting things and damaging the lawnmower and have to do a lot of repairs. But, you know, at least I got another one. I just park that one and get another one, and I can continue going. But, you know, besides the grass, I mean, you got stones that have uh, fell down or that are low. We are constantly be resetting them. There's a lot of low line areas or where graves are sinking. We're taking care of them. It's slowly but surely. But a lot of that uh, resetting and cleaning stones is done during the fall and winter when there's not grass cutting season. <clears throat> it takes about it takes me about 24 hours to cut this grass with a riding lawnmower, and that doesn't cover any of the. Uh, uh, personal plots that you, you can't get a riding lawnmower and you got to cut them by hand, with a push mower or whatever and then also out front it was when I first started out front uh, the cemetery was taking about four hours all right with the people coming down here and bringing the equipment and stuff uh, it's helped out it, it, I've cut it down to two hours which is a really really big benefit but anyways I mean if you look over the years uh, there are a lot of people. I mean, to figure in 160 years, uh, there's some that have been coming down here since they were kids with their parents. And, uh, and so I'd like to thank them. And, you know, there's about 10 to 12 people that actually come out here and cut the grass and or have a private uh, grass cutting company uh, cut the grass. And they do good. They do good. But a lot of these people that come out here and cut are in their 80s and so uh, they've been doing it a long time so hopefully we can give a little relief to some of these people 
uh, hopefully, you know, because I know over the years, uh, even uh, volunteering, I know how hard it was to try to volunteer something and work a full-time job and take care of your home and family. It, it, it just, it's almost impossible. So big hands out to you people that have to work and still come and volunteer. But also, there's a couple other questions, <coughs> excuse me, people ask, what's going to happen to the cemetery? <coughs> well, as you know, uh, it's privately, it was privately owned, and the, the owner had to walk away, okay? Uh, in my experience of seeing it, it's not income producing. There's no, no income <coughs> coming from here. <coughs> there's no plots for sale. People are still being interned here. As long as you have a plot, they have the deed, you know, it's your land. You can be buried here. And we've had quite a few this year. And <clears throat> so that's still up. But, you know, I know, uh, like I say, in the newspaper, videos, YouTube, you can see the issues that they've had here. And so <clears throat> hopefully we can build on what <clears throat> over the years what these people have accomplished here because they have accomplished a lot <clears throat> it's still here it's still a pretty cemetery and it is being kept up so but what I did find on uh, City of Hampton's website was uh, they had a uh, action item list a list of best practices frequently asked questions and some uh, personal property issues about being liability like you come out here and do work or whatever you know you're liable for the damages that you could do I haven't had any issues like that most people that well all the people that have come out here and express their any concerns they were very appreciative of what we were doing uh, <clears throat> the other thing is you know their action item list worked very well the only thing uh, on the action item list I think I didn't cover was contacting the seller I mean the owner I, I didn't contact the owner, uh, and I haven't really put out uh, any information on uh, uh, getting a volunteer list. All right, and so, like I said, it's on their website, and I found it very helpful. I used Microsoft Project uh, to build on that and, and try to do it, <clears throat> but it's a big task. Um, the other thing is, <clears throat> let's talk about legislation. Uh, for abandoned cemeteries in general. <clears throat> well, the whole state of Virginia, you know, and every state in the United States have old cemeteries, and I'm sure a lot of them are abandoned. And I think there's six states in the United States that have had addressed the issue and that are taking care of them. One state in particular is the state of New York. The uh, state of New York looks like they have a pretty good program. Uh, and there's several other I don't know about. But they have also got a, about an hour-long video on YouTube that I've watched and I've studied, and maybe I'll post it sometime. But it, it's a really good video. And uh, the other concern is, what's the future? Well, I can't tell you what the future is going to bring. Uh, but I did put out a request for some vision statements, you know, for several different people. You know, they talk about nonprofit. And uh, I did do a little research through the IRS and the state about nonprofit, but also by, by being a nonprofit, uh, it's still privately owned, okay? And to submit paperwork and go through all that and to find out that, uh, you know, you're not eligible for it can be a problem. And then where again, what again, if you're going to draw in enough money to really to help out, <clears throat> we don't hire out, we're all volunteer. Uh, we cut everybody's grass the same way as we do others, uh, at least try to. So if we were to hire out, we would get to work over here and then work over there. We're, it don't work. We're not here. But there are good uh, lawn services that do come in here and cut. <clears throat> the other thing is I was wheel going up, getting this dirt, wheel bearing it, bearing it back to these areas, and that was real time consuming. We had one of the volunteers from the uh, Sons of the Confederate come down with a Kubota. Kubota front with the front end loader. Man, that, I just could not believe just how much help that was. And then another one of the volunteers that come out here, he, he purchased a Kubota 
And man, we've done a lot with it. I mean, it saved me a lot of work, a lot of work. Been doing really good. And a lot of these grays are low, okay? And some of them, you know, it's really hard to even cut with a ride lawnmower uh, too deep, okay? And I've already damaged some of them, but, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, <clears throat> then let's get back to uh, the IRS and the state as far as a nonprofit. Now, both of them have dedicated website and de dedicated groups of addressing issues for nonprofits. All right. <clears throat> so I do know that, and I did do the research. But I myself, I'm not going to be able to do it alone. It's going to take intervention and assistance from other people. They're going to have to engage and want to do this. I would like to get public meetings set up so we could get together a couple times and see what they want to do. <clears throat> the other thing is, back to the city again, people say, oh, well, the city, <clears throat> they should be doing this and they should be doing that. Well, you know, you're entitled to your opinion. Uh, yeah, I know that they can come in here if it's a public nuisance and, you know, cut the grass, do whatever. But that's like an emergency, all right? And if you wait till it becomes a public nuisance, <clears throat> You got a mess, okay? And you got all that tall dead grass laying all over the place and the bottom of it don't look good. And then you gotta wait again. And then it comes a public nuisance. But nobody likes that. The families that live here, these homes, they don't like seeing that here. This is their live, this is their home, not my backyard. All right. And so even the people that live in this general area, within walking distance, like I say, have come down here. So I did address the issues on that. I'd like to put a thanks out to the U.S. Department of Interior because they also have a dedicated website for the preservation and uh, preservation of these cemeteries, you know, restoration and preservation to these cemeteries. And so that's really good. And YouTube. YouTube's been really good. I found a lot of good information on there. It's really good public service. Uh, I think for cemeteries and the different types of work and also find a grave right find a grave has been really good because <clears throat> my understanding is and from the records that I do have about 1999 is when the list of uh, was stopped being used here at the cemetery and so what I did do is go to the Hampton Library and in their historic room they do have this uh, book, and I made a copy of what I could, and then I went through and I made a, like a table of content. And so in the table of content, uh, a 1999, 420 of 1999, I think is approximately the, the, the last entry that they made as far as people being interned here. This has been a really good book, and it goes back to the 1800s, and I think they did an excellent job, okay? There's still some missed in here, but very few. Then also I went in and made a copy of the, uh, uh, from that book, there was maps in there. And so you can see there's a map here, that's uh, section one. And then this is a general map of the whole cemetery. Uh, and it's set up like an Excel spreadsheet. And so, what you might be able to see here, I know it might be hard to see, but there's like one through 100 and A through Z. So you can say J12 and it gets you an approximate location <clears throat> of where somebody was uh, buried at. But you won't find very many like that, okay? So the other thing we talk about, we talk about funding, where money can come from. Well, get back this day to the city again all right <clears throat> if we need the laws to change then you know it's the responsibility of our legislators at all levels of government both federal state and local to get these laws to where they're adequate okay not just cemetery laws but all laws right it's their responsibility to address the issue and try to resolve these issues. And also, 
I hope that people will understand that, <clears throat> you know, being a private cemetery, that the rights, uh, both from the state, uh, federal, and local governments, respect the laws as well as we have to respect the laws of the land. Okay, we need to respect the rights of others and the laws of the land. Okay, and <clears throat> they say get the city to come in here uh, without funding, training, and resources is you know you got to have some type of legislation and you got to have some type of funding. It's my understanding that there are that uh, there are some issues being brought up right now to our you know through our state government. Maybe the governor's looking at. I hope he does look at it. And uh, maybe the legislators in this state will come up with a, some sort of resolution. Now also, where I located this book in the city of Hampton, they did an excellent job of going through and locating all the cemeteries in the city of Hampton. And they did a, they did a really nice book and they categorized it. And there's different categories uh, of it and listed it and with a map. So that was really good. I made a copy of it at home. <clears throat> so. But also, I have a few books here. They're the History of Hampton. I got some uh, cemetery symbols. Hampton Old Wit. Hampton in uh, bygone days. And uh, one other one, I think this is probably the most current one, is Old Soldier Saloons and Community. And so what I did do is go through almost all these books and look for prominent names of people being buried here. Like right behind me, uh, Mayor Kearney uh, is interned here. I believe he died in office in the early 1900s. But I went through there, and maybe sometime I'll go through and, and locate and do a little bit more video. And it would be nice if our local newspaper would locate some of these uh, uh, prominent citizens and do a nice write-up in their papers and that uh, we'll have something, some research to go by uh, to try to get uh, some uh, historic significance to this cemetery so they also can get funded through the state. Uh, and then probably sell a lot of newspapers. But that's what I like to do. Uh, like I said, this is just a small introduction. So I thank you for uh, tuning in and uh, I'm gonna try to do this again. This is my third take on the video because I've tried three of them. And so you have a nice day and stay tuned in.